Okay, so now we have everything mounted, an idea of where we're gonna run our wiring and everything. So now let's get started with wiring the power source first. Okay, so the battery we're using here is the battery hookups battery that's new to the group that everybody's talking in mad rave about how good it is, how long it lasts, um, things like that. And it does have a lot of stuff on here that we are not going to use. Now, I can tell you because I've taken one apart that the small wires all go to a little sensor inside here that's not hooked to any battery source so it is perfectly fine to just clip those wires off and leave them inside the casing or if you wanted to you can do like I did on my other one you can cut this casing off you can remove that all together and then recase it however you choose uh, Nicholas has a housing that he has designed for it 3d printed I know Rad also has a box that he has designed um, both of them have BDIs built in. We don't need that for this situation. And this one's going to be perfectly fine for the customer. So at this point, we're going to need to figure out what connectors we're going to need. And we know that the switch wiring is going to go the positive to our amplifier. The switch is also going to power from the battery our charge port and our BDI also have to plug straight into the battery. Some people choose to put the charge port for the phone after the switch. That is completely up to you. You can wire it either way. You can wire it straight to the battery because this one has an on off switch built into it. Or you can prefer to it not get power until after the box is on. I prefer mine to be able to charge a phone and the speaker not be turned on at the same time. So that's the way you will see me wire this one. One thing to remember when you're doing your wiring and cutting your wiring, never leave the positive bare to sit around. If this positive and this negative happen to arc, not only can you burn up the BMS, but you could also do permanent damage to the battery or worse, injury to yourself all kinds of nasty things can happen with lithium. I'm sure everybody knows. So what we're going to do first, the very first thing I'm going to do is cut the positive right off of this and put a connector on it so that it is sealed away from everything else. I actually did have to strip that back. The wire connector fell off. So now I can take the negative and do the same thing with it. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my positive because I don't want to take any chances on anything arcing to one another. There we go. Now we're protected. Don't have to worry about anything shorting out, arcing out, anything like that. Next, we can get rid of this other wiring. Like I said, this just goes to a sensor down inside there it's perfectly fine to cut these wires and leave them down inside all we're going to be using is this okay so here's where the planning and stuff comes together so what i've done is i've taken a little time and decided that what i want to do is i want to tie this down and i'm going to glue my connectors to the battery itself because I don't want this moving around I don't want this to become a problem later on so I'm going to hot glue these connectors to that spot right there that way I can just tie my wires in run them straight down and I can bring everything else in here this is where you're going to want to kind of visualize it takes a little bit of time sometimes depends on how good you are how much you care as to how you're going to run, what connectors you're going to need, whether or not you need to solder an additional wire. Like on mine, I'm thinking that I'm going to wind up soldering some extension wires in so that I, I don't have multiple connections of these lever connectors um, sitting all in the box. I, I prefer as, as little of these as possible because this is a point that can fail, whereas solder typically does not. So that's what I'm going to do. And when you come back, most of this will be done. I'm not going to bore you with watching all of that stuff. Um, if you don't know how to solder, it is perfectly fine to use these. 
just know that they can be a failure point so if you have issues with cutting out or no power things like that make sure you're checking these so something else that's come up in the BNBBB group whether or not to fuse these things 100% put a fuse in it don't even play it's not even an option put a fuse in it it goes between the battery and the first source no matter what that source is going to be that's where you want your fuse do not take the chance on not fusing this and having it burn to the ground take everything else around it with you okay so after going over our switch we know that the green wires are normally closed we do not need that it is perfectly okay to cut it off here you can tie it up, you can do whatever you want to with it, just protect it, but it's not going to be used. Just know that it is live if you lay it out there somewhere. Okay, so for the wiring on this one, the, the white wire is our normally open, and the red wire is the positive for the LED light in the switch. We want the light to come on when the switch is on, not when the battery is powered up. So we're gonna tie those two together and they are going to attach to the amp. The black wire is the ground for the LED in the switch. And the yellow wires are common that goes to the battery. We also have a positive from the charge port for the phone that needs to tie here and a positive for the charging cord that needs to tie here and they all need to tie into battery positive so the yellow a wire from here and this positive all tied here and then the ground or the negative for the switch and for both of these ports and for the amp all tied to this negative Make sure after you've wired all of this together, before you attach it, that you test and make sure that when you turn the switch on, the light comes on and the amplifier come on. And when you turn the light off or the switch off, that the light goes out and the amp no longer has power and that your charging port for your phone does the same thing. When the switch is on, actually, I'm sorry, depends on which way you wire it. If you wire it after the switch, you want to make sure it does not power on with the, power, with the box off. If you're wiring it like I am prior, you want to make sure that the switch turns on and turns off. Okay, quick update on the wiring. Uh, as I've been working on it while you guys were away, seems like just a half a second ago that y'all were, you know, watching me start this process. Anyway, um, what I've got going on right now is I've got the charging port for the battery and the battery tied into a negative side and a positive side together, two into one. And over here on this end, we've got the normally open, sorry, this is the common. We've got the common side to battery power, and we've got the battery power for our phone charger tied into one, a two into one, and what we're gonna do is we'll connect these two. So that'll bring power from the battery into everything here. From the switch, we go out to negative. From the amp, we come out to negative. And from our normally open side of the switch and the LED positive, we tie into the positive of the amplifier here. So that in theory, when we connect these two ends together, Push the switch, everything turns on. Push the switch, everything turns off. All right, so the wiring is complete at this point. And what we want to do is we want to test it. So again, let's go over a real quick follow-up. Positive out of the battery goes in and ties into the charger port. It also comes through here and powers the phone charging port and the common side of the switch. Negative comes out of the battery, ties into this two into one, which powers negative to the charge port, comes through here to this two into one, 
powers the negative for the phone charger port, the negative for the LED in the switch, and the negative for the amplifier. And coming out of the switch with the red and white wire, we are tying into positive for the amp here. So that when we turn on the switch, the light comes on, and when we hit the switch for the battery indicator, the battery indicator comes on. So this is a test that tells me everything's powered correctly. And now we need to check, let's see if I can get in there and see that, that the blue light for the amplifier is on, so the amplifier is powered. And then when you turn the switch off, the light goes out, the indicator goes out, and the light for the amplifier goes out. So our wiring is correct. This part is complete. The next step is the fun one. We'll attach the lid, run our speaker wires, and give this thing a good test.